Welcome back to the farm and welcome to my beautiful 240 acre soybean field behind me. On today's agenda involves spraying some fungicide out on my 240 acre soybean field. That way it can prevent some of the diseases that are gonna be moving in since we're having a very good growing season and we have a lot of foliage here. We're gonna start seeing some disease pressure move in. So we're gonna spray this with some fungicide. But before we can do that, I wanna map the outside edge of this field that where the spray drone knows exactly where it needs to go. Here's what the screen's seen on the Mavic drone and we just finished our mission. And now the drone is gonna return itself to our takeoff point. This small mapping drone we use definitely isn't a requirement for the big spray drone, but it makes it super nice because now we have our little SD card with all of our pictures and GPS points on it that we'll bring to the computer. I just got the pictures here imported to Pix4D. I didn't take any pictures in the middle since I know there isn't anything out there I need to avoid. Now I'll just go around the outside edge and start clicking around where I want the boundary to be and that'll be in the controller when we're done. Now that the computer side of thing is done, it's time to start loading up with chemical. We're gonna be applying three products. Number one is their fungicide. This is to help prevent against some diseases that start to come here later in the season. The second is our adjuvant. This is just so the drone has good coverage and we're getting even droplets across our spray pattern. And the last one, this is a new product I'm trying this year from the Andersons. I'm gonna be throwing down some foliar feed. It is called Aeromino. It has eight pounds of nitrogen. This way, hopefully my soybeans will get honestly more yield. So we're gonna leave a check strip out in the field that way we can check this come harvest. But we got quite a bit of chemical we're gonna need loaded up for that 240 acre field. So let's start loading. Before we can head to the field, I need to do a couple things on the trailer. We need to change oil in both of our generators as well as add some water to our battery coolers. And that's the thing with the drone. You know, when I'm out there running, I can do about 50, 60 acres an hour, but it's all the setup and behind the scenes things that go on that really eat away at my time and eat away at the productivity and amount of acres per day that I can get done. just made it to the field although would a person really say they made it to the field since I'm not driving on the field and I'm also not like in the field with any equipment I'm just flying over top but I don't know it's weird because it's a drone not a tractor but I made it to the road where I'm gonna be flying and transiting to and from the trailer loading up with everything now we'll get the drone out of my storage container this is where I'll be setting up slowly moving along this road it's taking about 10 minutes here to get chemical loaded in and to get the drone all stage, we'll throw the drone up in the air. I've been out at this field now for over five hours and I should be done. But I've learned a very important and valuable lesson in terms of drones, in terms of when it comes to purchasing a drone too. And that lesson is something I didn't expect, but each one of these batteries that powers the drone was taking about eight to 10 minutes to charge up until today. And now today, every, every battery is taking about 20 to 25 minutes to charge, which means I have had a lot of idle time waiting for these stinking batteries to charge. And the reason I've been waiting so long is because every time I've charged these batteries, 
the lithium inside them slowly starts to degrade and degrade and degrade. So rather than charging them completely up to 100%, now I'm charging these batteries for the 250th time and I'm only getting up to 80%. So the drone is coming back earlier, they're not charging as fast. Now thankfully, this is the last field I'm gonna be droning for the year, at least at the moment. So it's not gonna slow me down a ton other than what it did today. But it's really making me wonder and think, I was intending to keep this drone for next year, but now that the batteries are degraded, I'm starting to wonder if a person should upgrade drones or purchase a whole new set of batteries or what the best option is. That time the drone took off there, I only had 75% and the batteries said they were completely charged. And I've been keeping track for the last hour and it says I'm only doing 25 acres per hour. So next year, I basically have two options now. Option number one, spend a bunch of money, buy new batteries. Each battery is about $1,500. So for the eight batteries I need, that'd be $12,000 to make this drone work. Or option number two, which is to sell this current drone with the batteries that are currently with it, invest that money into a new drone, which if somebody's out there purchasing a used drone, definitely make sure you look to see how many times the batteries have been charged because that's gonna determine how many acres you can do per hour. So haven't really decided exactly what I'm gonna do. Just kind of came upon this problem today. Frustrated at myself for not knowing that these batteries go bad after that many charges. Should I have known that? Probably not. Should I have asked the question? Yes. Definitely something I'm gonna keep in the back of my mind for the next drone purchase I might make or any other drone things because a person needs to know what the useful life is of this to determine how to position their business properly. Not that I would have changed a ton, but definitely would have helped out a little. Now I'm making some of the last passes here in the field. I got the screen recording on so you can see what the front camera sees. There are the telephone poles that we're gonna be dodging since I mapped them this morning. And then I can switch to the downward facing camera. That's the camera that's underneath looking at the soybeans. And then this is just the map or the operation itself. I just have a couple of rounds left to go and then we should be done and out of here. And back comes the drone from our last flight at this field. It took way longer than it should have. I still have about 10 gallons back there in the cone and since I'm done, I believe spraying fungicide for the year, I'm just gonna fill that up in the drone. We'll just dump it out in the middle of the field somewhere. That way we don't waste it. And that way everything will be cleaned out for when I gotta clean out the trailer. It kicks off such a nice cool breeze that it feels so good. And now if you're wondering where I'm gonna dump the chemical or how I determine, this is my field. This is a highly traveled tar road. So naturally, we're gonna start dumping the chemical right on the end here along the tar road. That way people are impressed by my crop. Of all the acres I sprayed, it's crazy to think there's probably less than 10 times I had to fly this thing manually like I did just there. And honestly, one of the most rewarding parts of me running this drone operation this summer was just getting to go out and meet other growers, being able to offer a service to them, help them. It was pretty rewarding for me knowing that I was doing a good job and it was awesome to meet some of the followers of my YouTube channel that said that they have been following along all summer long. And I've greatly appreciated that, greatly appreciate all the support from everyone that watches these videos. It's been a heck of a journey. Obviously, like I said, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this drone because of the battery situation. Might be looking at upgrading. I don't really know yet, but I will document it all here on the channel. So hit that subscribe button down below. And with that, that's it from a high-tech farmer who has beans that look like they're gonna be 70 bushels and is done spraying for the moment. Thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see ya in the next one.